J-Lo is taking none of the blame when it comes to her divorce. She is fully putting things on Ben because of his behavior. This is according to a source. What did he do exactly? Let's dive in. Ben Affleck's unpredictable behavior was reportedly a major factor in his divorce from Jennifer Lopez, according to a report by People. Right. Listen, you do have a message, okay? Don't do that. That's dangerous. A source told the outlet Ben's often unpredictable and giant mood swings ultimately divided him and Jenny, leading her to file for divorce after two years of marriage. For better or for worse, have followed my heart. You could see the weird behavior and giant mood swings, the source told people, noting that his temperament would sometimes swing from being incredibly happy and warm, the best light that emanated from him, to the deepest, darkest behavior. Happens that in this relationship right here, I'm the bull, you're the cow. The truth is, there was a great deal of love, but also unfortunately, what became clear were Ben's strange moods that he couldn't hide from the press as much as he tried to, the source continued. He barely here paid any attention to each other yeah, at all. Just like the insider went on to speculate that Ben was signaling a message to the press. Around the time of their separation date, which JLo specified in her filing as of April 26, 2024, the former couple was allegedly trying to work through their stuff. However, it was to no avail. Jenny officially filed her divorce on August 20th, 2024, the second anniversary of their Georgia wedding ceremony. It was like, it was a part of me then that I had to put away. Guys, not only is his behavior what's causing the divorce, apparently he had a woman on the side the entire time, which is why he's renting a whole entire home away from Jenny, according to the source. Following her highly publicized breakup with Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez just shared an Instagram photo of herself having fun in the summer. Jennifer Lopez writing in the caption, oh, it was a summer. According to a source who spoke to Page Six, Lopez is looking to make over her image going forward. Jennifer Lopez shared a series of photos from her single Hampton Summer on Instagram, featuring photos in bikinis and a close-up of a t-shirt bearing the poet R.H. Sin's word, she's in bloom and unbothered, out of reach and at peace. We've heard that Lopez's close family and friends, which includes her longtime manager, Benny Medina, are still steadfast. Regarding JLo's personal life going forward, however, a source stated she is open to listening to new voices of those around her. This is where it brought me to. Despite Jenny's marital troubles, Lopez and her former best friend, Leah Romini, made up. Romini just declared her own 21-year marriage to her husband, Angelo Pagan, to be over. Romini's worries about Ben caused the longtime friends to talk before Lopez married Affleck in 2022, according to a source. Rumini cautioned Lopez to keep in mind the reason she ended their 2002 relationship, because he is selfish and not fully committed as a partner, our source claims. According to the insider, JLo was so mad she cut off all ties. There's always a thing that you don't see coming. And declined to invite Rumini to their nuptials. Romini did not attend the couple's Georgia wedding, which was also attended by Jason Mewes, Matt Damon, and filmmaker Kevin Smith. At the time, TMZ was informed by sources that the ex-scientist was assisting her daughter Sophia, then 18, in preparing for college. In July, Lopez and Affleck eloped to Vegas for their first wedding ceremony. Romini has reportedly been eager to get back in touch with her old best friend because Lopez and Affleck were having trouble and divorce rumors were making headlines. We all know Ben and Jen's tumultuous relationship. They've been on and off, and for almost a year now, there have been breakup rumors surrounding them. Well, this may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Stay with me while I paint you a picture. Beautiful people grinning and clinking glasses on a stunning summer's day in Italy with the craggy Amalfi Coast serving as the backdrop. The focal point of the gathering is an immaculately made up Jennifer Lopez. As she gets ready to take a sip of her drink, she gives the camera a knowing smile. This marked the introduction of JLo's own cocktail line, Delola. Similar to other well-known Hollywood figures like Sarah Jessica Parker and George Clooney, JLo had aimed to create her own beverage line in order to increase the value of her business. Because her beverage business was one of the things that broke the camel's back, as a close friend of her husband Ben Affleck stated to DailyMail.com. It's also acknowledged that the beverage company was founded before they reconciled and Ben knew about and encouraged the venture. They even go so far as to imply that in the midst of rumors that their marriage is finally over, it helped Ben, not Jen, decide to call it quits. Why did Ben find this prominent business venture so weird? 
Well, according to friends, he regarded his wife's sales of vodka and tequila odd because he was a recovering habitual drinker. After all, he had battled his habits for many years. He was reported to be confused when the label was originally introduced in the previous year. The fact that he thought her sole purpose for starting her drink brand was to make hard, cold cash just made him feel more conflicted. Since 2001, when he first sought help for his habitual drinking, Ben has gone to help several times. His marriage to Jennifer Garner ended as a result of his habits. Worse, JLo then embarked on a highly visible promotional tour, telling the press how much she enjoys drinking to relax and let loose. She even shared a photo of herself to promote the newest item in the line, showing herself relaxing on a sunbed while wearing a swimming outfit. Ben had to fight to get his life back after overcoming the drink. Ben's buddy said to the male, Knowing that he had lost everything, including his family's love, and that he would relapse, Jen made the decision to launch her own spritzer line in an attempt to get extra money. Jen and Ben, who featured in Oscar-winning films, including Argo and Goodwill Hunting, have reportedly already filed their divorce paperwork. They both understand that what they had earlier is no longer there. What appeared to be a moving story of rediscovered love for someone lost has come to a sad end. Before getting married, the couple separated in 2004 after becoming together in 2002 and getting engaged. Following his 2005 marriage to Jennifer Garner, Ben and Garner went on to have three kids before divorcing in 2015 and completing their legal separation three years later. J.Lo later wed singer-songwriter Mark Anthony, with whom she had twins which were 16 years old. Ten years passed during their marriage. After JLo's failed engagement to baseball player Alex Rodriguez in 2021, Ben and Jen reconciled, much to the pleasure of fans in the press around the globe. The next year, they were married in Las Vegas and had a second, more elaborate ceremony at Ben's plantation in Georgia, which was worth $9 million. The pair hasn't been spotted together months before the divorce became official, though, with Ben declining to attend JLo's Bridgerton-themed 55th birthday celebration just recently. Rather, when the couple listed their $68 million Beverly Hills home for sale, he purchased a $20 million bachelor apartment in Los Angeles. But there were problems even last year in 2023. Ben saw JLo's April 2023 drink company launch, Delola, as a warning indication that she preferred her profession over him. In 2024, their respective desires, his for a quiet existence and hers for unrestricted all-access exposure, came to a head. Even though he tried to give in to her demand for attention, their disparate views on their careers caused their marriage to falter. Ben was the one to pull the plug on their marriage here, a friend stated. He perceived this as picking right back up since Jennifer had led him to believe that she was the same person that she had been when they initially fell in love. Although he dislikes walking the red carpet with celebrities, he did it because she did. He could no longer handle her infatuation with fame. She had to be loved and captured on camera. He felt as though nothing remained sacred for him because she would reveal so much of herself to everyone. This was something she had to do. Her popularity had become an integral part of her identity. JLo's friends also report that she had altered her appearance and manner of dressing. She says that performing is more than just a profession to her and that she ultimately felt unable to give it up. Like with her previous three marriages, she made the decision to prioritize fame over him. In fact, it seemed like JLo was basing a large portion of her recent successful commercial production on their rekindled romance. Some even claimed that he was not exactly thrilled because her new album was all about him and he didn't even like her television program, This Is Me Now, A Love Story. That documentary, which featured Jen's account of her own road to love, was widely panned and failed to connect with viewers, costing millions of dollars. According to a person close to the pair, Ben was incensed. He didn't want her to do this at all. She asked him to invest in it and be involved in a project he was absolutely against. In the end, he was glad it flopped. It too destroyed their marriage. Ben didn't want their love story to be told. Only she did. During a recent solo outing in Los Angeles, Jennifer Lopez was glowing. Jenny was beaming when she got to her friend's house barely a day after she and her estranged husband got back together. The couple who are going through a rough divorce appeared quite hostile during the heated reunion outside the hotel, but inside, according to insiders, things were different. According to Page Six, the Benefer tale has taken yet another unexpected turn when they were spotted cuddling up to their kids at the Beverly Hills Hotel during breakfast. A source claimed that Ben and Jennifer were at the Polo Lounge at the Beverly Hills Hotel holding hands and locking lips. 
In addition, the insider revealed that their children were there at the restaurant, but at a separate table. After breakfast, Jennifer Garner showed up to take her and Affleck's children, and the two ex-couples drove off together. When DailyMail.com asked the representatives to comment on the shocking PDA charges, they did not respond right away. JLo recently wore a backless dress with puffed sleeves made of a light linen material, and she clearly exuded happiness. She seemed to be wearing little to no makeup and put her hair up in a casual, unkempt updo for her outing. She crossed the yard and headed towards the front door, carrying a brown suede drawstring bag with a black leather crossbody strap. During the sunny day, she accessorized with a matching chain necklace and enormous gold hoop earrings. She wore oversized sunglasses. On her right hand, she also had a variety of rings and bangle bracelets on. The pair's been a part of some recent strange public activities before this encounter. JLo and Ben's closest buddy, Matt Damon, were spotted holding hands. Thereafter, Ben was observed pecking Matt Damon's wife Luciana on the cheek. JLo and Matt Damon were seen having a lengthy talk at the Unstoppable premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival on September 6th, 2024. It was reported that they had a serious 20-minute exchange during which they kept their heads close together. Following their breakup, reports indicate that Lopez was keen to talk to Damon about her divorced husband, but insiders say Matt had no interest in the subject. Any attempts by JLo to talk about Ben at the premiere was shut down by by Matt Damon, an insider exclusively told DailyMail.com. It was her timing that was so awkward because she would have known that pulling Matt aside during the event to have an intimate talk was going to get picked up and go viral. The source continued, her whole hand on his hand was a nice touch, but he was not having any of it. He informed her that while he was grateful for her involvement in the movie and pleased to hear that she was doing well, he was not there to discuss Ben in any way. Then on September 13th, Affleck was spotted gleefully welcoming Damon's wife to his Los Angeles office. Affleck, wearing a navy suit, gave Luciana a quick peck on the side of the head. Ben and Matt have been pals for over 40 years. With the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for Goodwill Hunting, they made a huge splash in 1997. Affleck produced the sports drama Unstoppable, which tells the story of Anthony Robles, a man born without a leg, who competes against the same institution that rejected him to become a champion wrestler. In the movie, Jennifer has a supporting part. Apparently, the darkness in Ben ultimately got to Jenny, despite her months-long effort to save the relationship, according to a person who spoke about it earlier in 2024. According to a person close to Jennifer Lopez, she loves him, she will always love him, that's the problem. Page Six was informed. There is a darkness within Ben that no one else can resolve. Jen Garner couldn't fix it, all the success in the world couldn't fix it. In the early months of Benefer 2.0, Jennifer Lopez was known for keeping her man close to her heart with jewelry that spelled out his name, a Ben necklace and an Affleck nameplate. But now that the red carpet power couple's marriage is kaput, JLo's using her outfits to make a very different sort of statement. I feel like there's a lot of life ahead of me. JLo shared an end of August photo dump on Instagram that included, among other things, a close up shot of a t shirt printed with a telling quote from the poet R.H. Sin. She's in bloom and unbothered, out of reach and at peace. I mean, if you have to wear a shirt to tell people you're unbothered, it kind of makes it seem like you might be a little bit bothered. Rightfully so, though, divorce is no joke. JLo's second slide featured another pointed mantra, everything is unfolding in divine order. In another snap from the post captioned, oh, it was a summer, JLo shows off a swimsuit selfie, showing off her famous behind and her go-to white one piece. Along with several family photos and puppy pics, she also included shots of herself enjoying an ice cream cone in Dior and sitting pretty in pink Gucci. While JLo didn't file for a divorce from Ben until August 20th, 2024, this was the exact date of their second wedding anniversary, by the way, she listed their date of separation as April 26th in the court documents. A source told Page Six that she did this to take a stand and send a message to Ben. And as evident by her latest Instagram upload, Jennifer spent most of her summer away from her ex Ben, even celebrating her 55th birthday in July with an opulent Bridgerton themed bash that Ben had no interest in attending. At the Toronto International Film Festival after party for her film Unstoppable, Jennifer Lopez and Matt Damon were observed engaging in a private conversation. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck's best friend Matt Damon reportedly had a long, deep conversation. Seated in a private corner of the party, Jennifer and Matt Damon had their heads pressed together and solemn looks on their faces. 
At one point, JLo put her hand on Matt's as he lowered his head as if in prayer, while JLo was rocking a vengeance dress reminiscent of a disco ball. For over 40 years, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck have been buddies. With the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for Good Will Hunting, they made a huge splash in 1997. And the Oscar goes to Ben Affleck and Matt Damon! Affleck produces the sports drama Unstoppable, which tells the story of Anthony Robles, a man born without a leg, who competes against the same institution that rejected him to become a champion wrestler. In the movie, Jennifer has a supporting part. Instead of taking the chance of a highly public run-in with his ex on the Toronto red carpet, Affleck chose to stay at home. Good idea. Jennifer Lopez spent months attempting to save her relationship, but ultimately she was unable to see past the darkness in him, according to a source who spoke out earlier this summer. It was all like, nothing really special. The issue is that she still loves him and will always love him. A person close to JLo told Page Six. Ben has a darkness to him that no other person can fix. Jen Garner couldn't fix it. All the success in the world couldn't fix it. The source continued, it was believed that JLo had hoped Ben would attend her 55th birthday party in the Hamptons in July, which had a Bridgerton theme, but he did not. She truly believed this was the greatest love story she'd ever known, and she was finally getting her chance at the fairy tale, the insider claimed. It's such a meta story, right? They continued saying she just really didn't stop to consider who the actual man was in the fairy tale. Following their 2022 wedding, Jennifer filed for divorce from the Argo filmmaker just recently. She gave this everything she had, her whole heart. She would have done anything to make this work. The outlet reported, adding, but she didn't want to believe it. She truly believed love could conquer all. She opened herself up to criticism, ridicule, and countless naysayers who told her this was a bad idea, that it was doomed, that there was a reason it didn't work out the first time, the source said. But she didn't want to believe it. She truly believed love would conquer all. Despite navigating the end of her fourth marriage, a source told DailyMail.com that Jennifer Lopez was happy to head to the Toronto Film Festival to promote this film because Unstoppable means a lot to her and she wants to support it. It is a true life story that is very inspirational and she is proud to be part of it. Acting in the movie was a high point for her. The insider added and that the movie has been getting a lot of attention and Jennifer wants it to do the best it can. She is very professional and always works hard to give her movies the best opportunities. It may be obvious why normal people wouldn't want to give Amber Heard any attention, but Hollywood's morals are usually pretty flexible. Let's see why Hollywood refuses to work with Amber Heard anymore. Amber Heard's career saw many significant roles, but her most notable opportunity came in 2017 when she first portrayed Mara in the DC Extended Universe with Justice League. The firstborn of beloved Queen Atlanta. Unfortunately, the film itself was a critical and commercial flop, although this had little to do with Heard's performance. The DCEU had plans for Mara, and Heard reprised her role in the 2018 film Aquaman, which was a much more successful venture. Aquaman enjoyed a positive reception and impressive box office returns, signaling that Mara would likely return in the sequel. The follow-up film, however, faced its own set of challenges. The release of Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom in 2023 was marred by negative reviews and disappointing financial performance. One key issue was the rumored tension between the film's lead, Jason Momoa, and Heard. Speculation about animosity between the stars led to a fan petition demanding Heard's removal from the film. When Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom was finally released, it was evident that Heard's role had been significantly reduced, with multiple scripts cutting down her scenes and a major fight sequence being omitted. The negative buzz and onset drama undoubtedly impacted the film's reception and financial success. Heard's personal life, particularly her contentious divorce from Johnny Depp, further complicated her career. Their divorce finalized in January 2017 was highly publicized and contentious. Heard had initially filed for divorce and a restraining order alleging some pretty bad stuff. Depp and his legal team strongly denied these allegations. The divorce settlement involved Heard dropping the restraining order and receiving a cash settlement, which she pledged to donate to charity. While the divorce itself was settled relatively quickly, the aftermath continued to generate headlines, particularly after Heard published an op-ed in the Washington Post in which she described her experiences of DV. That's why I wrote this op-ed. 
He's a very powerful man, and people love currying favor with powerful men. Although Heard did not explicitly name Depp in the op-ed, it was widely understood that he was the subject. This led to significant repercussions for Depp, including losing major roles in the Pirates of the Caribbean and Fantastic Beast franchises. Depp's career and reputation suffered considerably, prompting him to file a defamation lawsuit against Heard. The legal battle between Depp and Heard extended beyond their divorce. Depp had previously lost a libel case against The Sun for calling him something unsavory, resulting in his removal from Fantastic Beasts and further tarnishing his public image. Subsequently, Depp sued Heard for defamation over the op-ed, claiming it damaged his career and reputation. Heard responded with a counterclaim, alleging that Depp's accusations and online petitions had led to her being fired from Aquaman and L'Oreal. This legal dispute culminated in a highly publicized trial in Fairfax County, Virginia, which took place from April 11th to June 1st, 2022. The trial was widely broadcast, offering a glimpse into the personal and legal turmoil between the former couple. Public opinion became polarized, with Depp supporters rallying under the Justice for Johnny banner. Ultimately, the jury sided with Depp, awarding him $15 million in damages, while Heard received $2 million in a partial victory on her counterclaim. Amidst these personal and legal battles, Amber Heard continued her acting career. She appeared in films like Justice League and Aquaman, as we said before, and took on a role in the 2020 miniseries The Stand, an adaptation of Stephen King's post-apocalypse apocalyptic novel. This series, however, did not achieve the success of its 1994 predecessor and received mixed reviews. Rotten Tomatoes rates it at 57%, with the audience score even lower at 25%. It will be my queen. Heard's portrayal in the series diverged from the book's character, which might have contributed to the mixed reception and criticism of her casting. The negative publicity from the trial had a significant impact on Heard's career prospects. While Depp's career seemed to recover following the trial, Heard struggled with limited opportunities. This led her to seek work internationally. In Italy, she starred as Grace Burnham in the film In the Fire, a story about a doctor treating a young boy with mysterious abilities on a remote plantation. The film premiered at the Teormina Film Festival in June 2023 and had a limited US release in October 2023. However, In the Fire was poorly received holding a 15% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics described it as a disappointing vehicle for Heard, noting that it failed to offer anything new to the genre. During her time in the DCEU, Heard faced numerous challenges, including onset rumors and alleged conflicts with her co-star Jason Momoa. Allegations surfaced that Momoa had wanted Heard removed from Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, and there were claims that he dressed up like Johnny Depp to taunt her. These rumors, coupled with the trial's fallout, contributed to her diminished role in the sequel and difficulties in securing work. In response to the mounting career challenges and negative public sentiment, Heard relocated to Spain. Fluent in Spanish, she moved to Madrid with her daughter, signaling a potential shift away from Hollywood. While she did continue to work in European cinema, her future in the US film industry remained uncertain. Despite her continued efforts in acting, the impact of the trial and ongoing public scrutiny have cast a long shadow over her career. Come here, come, yeah, come no, here, come wait. Here. Katy Perry isn't the cleanest celeb out there. Like some other celebs, she can act like a firework. I mean, in the celeb world, she may be seen as a dark horse. I'm coming at you like a dark horse. But at the end of the day, she's still a California girl. All right, all right, I'll stop. These are some shady things Katy Perry has done. One of her hits was reported for copyright reasons. The late 2000s and early 2010s saw Katy Perry enjoy a run of success with her back-to-back -back albums, One of the Boys, Teenage Dream, and Prism. Teenage Dream. Dark Horse, one of her greatest hit singles, scored to the top of the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 2014. But the same year, a lawsuit alleging plagiarism ruined the song's success. Christian hip-hop musician Flame, real name Marcus Gray, filed a lawsuit alleging Dark Horse plagiarized a large chunk of his 2008 song, Joyful Noise. 2019 saw the courts declare Perry liable for infringement, as Variety reports. She has a feud with T-Swift. Taylor Swift. I love her as a songwriter as, as well. In addition to her fame, Katy Perry is perhaps best known for her long-running feud with fellow pop sensation Taylor Swift. Online jabs, diss tracks, and more were all part of the media frenzy that erupted from what began as Perry stealing Swift's backup dancer roster. Between 2014 and 2019, the two celebrities spoke with reporters intermittently, and as their separate singles, Bad Blood and Swish Swish were released, Swish, swish the drama was quickly consumed by the internet community. 
I wish that I could turn the other cheek every single time, but I'm also not a pushover, you know? Perry revealed in 2017 to NME. She talked bad about other divas. Taylor Swift isn't the only legendary pop star that Katy Perry has thrown shade at. Perry seemed to crack down on Mariah Carey in an Australian TV interview from 2014. The reporter said that maybe Mariah Carey would hold that position after refuting the assertion that she was the most popular female entertainer globally. Perry retorted, I mean, she's fabulous for a throwback, according to news.com.au. Well, she's fabulous for a throwback. <laughs> we love Mariah Carey's song Fantasy and I Love Honey. I listened to all of those songs growing up. Fans of Mariah Carey's were obviously unhappy with Perry's remarks. She may be beefing with Lady Gaga. In terms of calling out celebrities, Perry had a great year in 2014, and Lady Gaga was not spared. It's possible that Lady Gaga initiated this beef. Perry debuted her Prismatic World Tour in that year with colorful hair and ensembles that mirrored Gaga's 2013 album and art pop aesthetic. In an ex Q&A with fans, Gaga herself made a statement about the similarities, saying, it looks like green hair and mechanical horses are the thing now. Perry has also made remarks about Gaga in public criticizing the singer's method of reaching out to her fans. She said, some people are so dramatic about it and you're like, honestly, you're not the second coming. You're just an entertainer. And just one person believes in you and it can change everything. She ghosted her best friend in a flash. In addition to smack talking her fellow pop singers, Katy Perry has also ghosted them. Early in the new millennium, Perry and Rihanna looked like a couple. They traveled to tropical destinations and attended public events together, such as the MTV VMAs. Before Perry married her now ex-husband Russell Brand in 2010, Rihanna even hosted a bachelorette party for her BFF. However, Katy Perry cut ties with her former best friend when Rihanna started seeing her ex-boyfriend Chris Brown in 2012. They even had separate seats for the 2013 Grammy Awards. We've had dinner, and that's about it, Katy Perry told MTV News in 2013. I think she's doing fine, I don't know. She spoke on beef that didn't include her. Katy Perry has publicly remarked on other celebrities' feuds in addition to her own personal beefs. Amidst her continuing feud with Taylor Swift, Perry responded on social media to Nicki Minaj's remark against Taylor Swift. Swift responded with a clap in support of herself when Minaj expressed her disappointment at not receiving a nomination for Video of the Year at the 2017 MTV VMAs, while other musicians did. Perry decided to voice her opinion about the matter, which didn't directly include her in line with Swift. Finding it ironic to parade the pit women against other women thing about, as one unmeasurably capitalizes on the takedown of a woman, she posted to X. Shortly later, Perry's post was liked by Minaj, but Minaj's purported dispute with Swift ended quickly, in contrast to the years-long feud between Swift and Perry. Perry was not in attendance at the VMAs, but the two eventually shared a stage together. She called out a bunch of her exes. In addition to criticizing other pop stars in public, Katy Perry has cast a shadowy light on a few male musicians, including one of her former boyfriends. Perry ruined their love life years later in a viral game of Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts with James Corden, following a brief affair with DJ Diplo in 2014. Diplo came in last when she ranked her three then ex-partners based on how amazing they were in bed in the game. The musician, for his part, made light of his position on social media. He posted on X, I won the bronze medal in the bed Olympics. In a subsequent post, he said, I don't even remember doing it. She kicked a retired veteran out of his home. Katy Perry has taken her shady side to real estate, allegedly trying to forcibly remove an 83-year-old veteran from his home. Katy Perry paid $14.2 million for a large Montecito, California mansion in 2021 with her partner, actor Orlando Bloom. However, Carl Westcott, the former owner of the estate, sued the couple later on, claiming that he was not fully aware when he originally signed the deed to them. Westcott's brain function was impacted by Huntington's disease, which only made matters worse. The New York Post claims that the well-known couple wrote Westcott a letter expressing how much they loved the house and even increasing the price they would be willing to pay for a new residence. Westcott, for his part, refused to back down, saying he wanted to stay on the land because he was approaching the end of his life. By 2023, the judge had sided with Perry and Bloom and had granted their ideal home, disregarding Westcott's requests. Perry's representatives told Rolling Stone, Mr. Westcott breached the contract simply because he changed his mind. We eagerly anticipate resolving this matter during the scheduled damage trial phase. She tried to take control of a convent from a nun. 
Over the years, Katy Perry has gotten into a lot of legal disputes, but one of the most peculiar ones may have been when she sued some nuns for the sale of their convent in the Los Angeles region. The property, which had formerly belonged to the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and had housed the sisters of the Most Holy and Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, was sought after by Perry in 2015. The Archbishop rescinded the sisters' original sale of the building to restaurateur Dana Hollister and instead countersold it to Perry. Her attitude was worked against her. For six years, Katy Perry served as the middle-seated judge on the revived version of American Idol. By the time Perry's time on the popular reality competition show came to an end, things had become quite bad for her with viewers and even producers. In 2024, Perry made her exit from the show public amid reports that the production wasn't treating her well and manipulating video to make her appear to be the worst judge. Worse, Idol reviewers had been criticizing Perry's on-screen persona, even going so far as to make fun of her live when she questioned questioned a contestant's costume. She continued to work with someone she definitely shouldn't have. In 2024, Katy Perry faced criticism following her reunion with producer Dr. Luke for a new album. The two had previously worked with another great producer, Max Martin, on some of Katy Perry's biggest singles, such as California Girls and Teenage Dream. Martin would return to record Perry's 2024 album. However, many expressed concern regarding what was surrounding Dr. Luke and Perry's role in it. Dr. Luke and fellow pop sensation Kesha were involved in a legal dispute in 2018, with Kesha accusing Dr. Luke of some horrible things. Kesha, who had been in one of Perry's music videos, brought Perry into the legal dispute by claiming an accusation Perry refuted that Dr. Luke had also done the same thing to Katy Perry. Blake Lively isn't the nicest celeb on the planet. We know this from her interviews and reported conduct that recently came out about her. Well, there's only one thing we can do about it, and that's compile a list. These are some of Blake Lively's rudest moments caught on camera. The Notorious Interview When reporter Kirsty Flaw congratulated a pregnant Blake Lively in 2016 during an interview on her little bump, Blake retorted with a snarky congrats on your little bump. First of all, congrats on your little bump. Congrats on your little bump. An agitated flaw, who wasn't pregnant, giggled uneasily as Blake Lively and co-star Parker Posey continued to make small talk. Turning to Posey, Lively said, Everyone wants to ask about the clothes, but I wonder if they would ask the men about the clothes. She was being asked about the period costumes for the Woody Allen movie. Flaw looked on nervously as the two, in typical mean girl way, disregarded the reporter and talked about what the males wore in the movie. His, his wardrobe was beautiful. Oh, they literally pretended the interviewer doesn't exist. This is just a 101 high school tactic. A YouTuber replied. Another wrote, I think it's crazy how Blake calls herself a feminist, yet goes after a fellow woman on her body, when the woman was clearly congratulating her. After the clip went viral, Flaw told the Daily Mail, I was there so they could promote a movie. I was invited to meet them. It certainly did not feel like that. I felt belittled and ignored, and it made me question if I ever wanted to do these types of interviews again. She further disclosed that her inability to conceive made the little bump remark very upsetting. I didn't know how to react. I felt very uncomfortable throughout the interview and all I wanted to do was leave and get out of there as fast as I could, Flaw shared. She dismissed the themes of her newest movie. One of the many troubling aspects surrounding the promotion of It Ends With Us has been the lack of seriousness given to the topic of DV, particularly in the case of Blake Lively. As she and her co-star Brandon Sklenar spoke with reporter Jake Hamilton, Blake Lively was asked how fans of the film may get in touch with her if they saw her out in public. Like asking for my address or my phone number or like my location share. I could just location share you, she joked. Or like my location share? Or I could just location share you and- her initial response to the first question is so out of touch, a fan stated. The subject of DV clearly has too much depth for her. They're all talking about getting emotional over the project and she's talking about looking pretty while crying. Just do everyone a favor and leave the promotion to Justin, another replied. When Lively shared a Q&A she conducted with It Ends With Us author Colleen Hoover and her castmates, Jenny Slate and Isabella Ferrer, she came under further criticism. Rather than talking about the movie's somber content, they engaged in a lighthearted conversation about things like zodiac signs. This is shameful. I don't understand why everyone's laughing and no one mentioned DV even once, an Instagram user commented. The film deals with a very serious thing, which is DV, and she is talking as if it were a romantic film, another said. She said that pregnancy cravings aren't real. 
Is Blake Lively sensitive to the topic of pregnancy, or was she just having fun? Blake Lively was asked how she was doing by Extra while she was pregnant with her first child, James, via TikTok. Ryan Reynolds' wife was seven months pregnant and in need of foot rubs. Oh, she's just taking advantage, Lively chuckled. You're a sucker, you can't fall for that stuff. Cravings? Nah. She continued, after claiming that women fabricate pregnant desires in order to obtain what they desire, the actor clarified that she was making a joke. A user on TikTok remarked, when I was pregnant, I wanted mashed potatoes every day. In the two years I've had my daughter, I've had mashed potatoes four to five times. I'm glad I'm finding out cravings aren't a thing. Thanks, Blake. Another quipped, I'm starting to think she probably doesn't know how to interview. P.S. My feet hurt all the time. Lively admitted to having cravings for her fourth pregnancy, even though she didn't have any at the time. She posted a picture of an opulent pastrami and cheese sandwich from a New Orleans restaurant, according to Us Weekly. Tell me your pregnant without telling me you're pregnant, she wrote. I hope she didn't use her husband Ryan Reynolds as an excuse to force him to take an early night flight to New Orleans in order to sate her appetite. Kate Middleton was ridiculed by her. Following the release of a digitally manipulated family portrait, including Kate Middleton and her three children, there was a great deal of conjecture. Per NBC News, a few days later, Blake Lively shared a photo in a now-deleted Instagram post that was obviously edited with the caption, I'm so excited to share this new photo I just took today to announce our four new Betty Buzz and Betty Boos products. Now you know why I've been MIA. After Middleton revealed her cancer diagnosis, Lively said in a seemingly playful post, I made a silly post around the Photoshop fails frenzy, and oh man, that post has me mortified today. I'm sorry. Sending love and well wishes to all, always. She posted her Photoshop fail joke about Princess Kate and now is mortified. She thought it was okay to take a jab at a mother of three recovering from an unknown surgery because other celebrities were. Tall tale of a follower, a Reddit user posted. A fan commented, poor judgment coming from a grown woman with children of her own in a celebrity family. Not even funny, no purpose for posting. She promoted her brands during her press tour. People prepare for more tone-deaf moments from Blake Lively. She not only seized the chance to make It Ends With Us about her style, but the performer also utilized the film to advertise Betty Boo's, her line of beverages. I've got a dream! When your company throws a florist-themed party for your movie, at It Ends With Us movie, I love the bottles as tiny as vases. Thank you, team. She gushed on Instagram while standing in front of a floral wall in a bright pink outfit. Once more, the glitzy visuals didn't fit the mood of the film, and a lot of DV sufferers criticized her for endorsing beverages which is connected to certain behaviors. That same day, Lively advertised for Blake Brown, her hair care line, which is another one of her brands. Seven years and thousands of washes later, Blake Brown Beauty is finally available in Target stores nationwide. Eight hardworking products for great hair days. We can't wait for you to try them, smell them, live in them, she shared on Instagram. Although she made no mention of It Ends With Us, fans criticized her for promoting her products rather than raising awareness of DV. Disappointed that you're promoting your own hair care products and flower dresses rather than shining more light on DV, considering you're acting in a movie about it, an Instagram user replied. Looking through Blake Lively's past isn't shining such a great light on her. Let's look at some moments when Blake Lively's behavior went too far. First of all, congrats on your little bump. Uh, congrats on your little bump. <laughs> Although you may have believed that the Gossip Girl co-stars were closest friends, the reality couldn't be further from the truth. Before delivering her statement at Pally Fest in 2008, Blake Lively is shown in the Rediscovered interview participating in a panel discussion with Leighton Meester and the other Gossip Girl cast members. She was disclosing the promises the producers of Gossip Girls had given her in order to guarantee her role as Serena on the show. She explained that in the books, Chuck Bass had a pet monkey, something she wasn't keen on. Anna. It was the, another promise was I no pet monkey. So she admitted that she made them promise there would be no pet monkey. She continued, Chuck has a pet monkey with coordinating outfits. And I was like, I would love to be a part of the show, but I can't act with a monkey. She then pointed directly to Layton and joked, well, I got a few of them. Layton was offended by the remark, rightfully so, and Penn Badgley and Chase Crawford glanced at the ground awkwardly as the audience chuckled. And then I got 
And a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> when none of her co-stars laughed, she exclaimed, Come on, it was a joke. Lord have mercy. Come on, it was a joke. Not a very good joke. A tweet went viral which showed an image of Blake Lively giving a quote to a journalist where she says a term widely accepted to be not very kind to those who've transitioned. Blake Lively talked to Elle magazine about her hopes for her future children and what they might wear while she was filming Gossip Girl. The quote says, I hope to have a few girls one day. If not girls, they better be because I have some amazing shoes and bags that need to be appreciated. Later in another video, she repeated the word. You read the gossip magazines and everybody is dating everyone. Everyone hates everyone. Everybody's had tons of plastic surgery and we're actually men and it's just like you don't listen to the rumors. What, what is the next what five does that years mean? of- <laughs> Goodness gracious. At the Boone Hall Plantation in South Carolina, which housed nine worker huts during the owning of People, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds tied the knot in 2012. In an Instagram post from 2020, Blake and Ryan expressed their regret about the plantation wedding. They wrote, We're ashamed that in the past we've allowed ourselves to be uninformed about how deeply rooted systematic unrest is. We want to educate ourselves about other people's experiences and talk to our kids about everything, all of it, especially our own complicity. It turns out that Blake Lively has been making statements in interviews for years, in between all of the terrible It Ends With Us interviews. Journalist Kirsty Flaw shared the eight-year-old footage from when she interviewed Blake, admitting sitting down with Blake Lively and her co-star Parker Posey for Cafe Society in 2016 is the most uncomfortable interview situation I have ever experienced. Is it not okay to congratulate someone on their pregnancy or to ask another woman about costumes she's wearing in the film? When Kirsty tries to ask polite questions and make good comments to the two in the nightmare interview footage, Blake brusquely rejects her. She congratulates Blake Lively on her pregnancy, saying congrats on your your little bump. Then, even though Flaw isn't pregnant, Blake Lively responds to the journalist with the same remark. Just super passive aggressive. During an interview about It Ends With Us, the host asked Blake Lively how people might approach her regarding the film's delicate and deeply personal topics. He inquired, Most of us who are lucky enough to run into a celebrity in public get only a few brief moments to maybe speak to you guys. But for people who see this movie, who relate to the topics of this movie on a deeply personal level, they're really going to want to talk to you. This movie is going to affect people and they're going to want to tell you about their lives. So if someone understands the themes of this movie, they come across you in public and they want to talk to you, what's the best way for them to talk to you about this? She then joked about releasing her phone number to fans rather than taking the topic seriously, wondering why she wouldn't just location share at that point. In response, she said, that's like asking for my address or my phone number, location share. I could just location share you and then we could just, before she started trailing off while laughing. She continues, I'm a Virgo, so every time I'm like, are we talking logistics emotionally? Regarding her interview, one Reddit user shared their comments, writing, what the heck is wrong with her? This is just willful ignorance and lack of self-awareness from a fully grown woman. Is she even aware of what the movie is promoting? Does she know what it's about? The cognitive dissonance is off the charts at this point. She reduced the valid question the interviewer asked her to a flippant joke. I genuinely feel bad for her co-star, and you can clearly see he is uncomfortable, but since they've all thrown in their lot with Blake and her annoying husband, they are stuck with this mess. I honestly appreciate Justin for being the only person to address and tackle the DV themes on this press tour. Kim Kardashian was just caught lashing out in rare public outbursts as she flashes a crude gesture I'm, guys, hearing, I'm hearing kids. Guys, can you stop? This is like your first time at work You're with me. Kim Kardashian was clearly upset as she left a Los Angeles skin clerk clinic and she lost it, guys. She was caught in a moment of frustration, literally flipping off the paparazzi. She did this despite previously scolding her own child for doing the same thing to the paparazzi, which I'll talk about coming up real soon. Stop <laughs> <laughs> but she was leaving the skincare clinic in December 2023 and Kim with a fresh face as well as oversized sunglasses you know she was trying to keep a low profile by covering her head with a hoodie you know just trying to stay out of the public eye a little bit and her outfit consisted of a black tee loose black pants and black sneakers and she carried what looked like a bag of products from the clinic and just like that she raised her middle finger towards 
the camera, boom. She just seemed to be in a bad mood as she walked back to her luxury SUV, okay. And honestly, this is pretty strange coming from Kim Kardashian because she's always in the public eye. She's a public figure and she loves being photographed and she loves having cameras on her. She loves being the center of attention. So what was going so wrong in her world that she thought that this was a good idea? Hi weirdos. Hey, stop it. Hi vloggers. If you're watching this, I hate you. Hey. Maybe it's all the pressure that she's been under to apologize to Taylor Swift for shading her many years ago. Yeah, at the time of filming this, that feud was recently reignited and Taylor Swift's fans are all over Kim Kardashian on social media right now. I I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Or maybe it was the fact that her kids are liking their time with their father and her ex-husband, Kanye West, a lot more than they like their time with her. Reports are also suggesting this too, by the way. Either way, whatever the reason was, it's definitely not a good look for Kim. It sends all of the wrong messages, especially to her kids who look up to her. Guys, this is your first time at work with me. Don't mess this up. <laughs> and speaking of her kids, by the way, uh, Kim Kardashian, her recent gesture of flipping off the paparazzi follows a couple of incidents involving her son, Saint. In September of 2023, her son, Saint, was photographed making the similar rude hand and gesture after his basketball game. And despite giggling about it, Kim Kardashian gave him a stern look and briefly covered his face with her hand. And then the following month, Saint repeated the exact same flipping off the paparazzi gesture as he stepped out of the car. And this prompted another warning from Kim Kardashian. Like these incidents occurred while Saint was with his friends. So he of course is probably trying to just, you know, make them laugh a little bit. You know how kids are when they're with their friends. Following Saint's second offense though, Kim Kardashian, she stepped in, she intervened by smacking his hand down and instructing him to stop it. Like she was not having it. But despite the warning, Saint chuckled again, you know, laughing because his friends were there as well. But this is not just her son doing this. Kim had also previously shared that her eldest child, Northwest, her daughter, frequently sticks out her middle finger. And this happened during 2021. It was a Christmas card photo shoot and this led to many unusable photos. And Kim revealed this in a June 2022 episode of her family's TV show, The Kardashians. Well guys, we all know now where Kim Kardashian's kids get it from, her. So she can't blame them. Can't be like, oh, you're being bad, you're acting up, stop it, when she's doing the exact same thing. Yeah, definitely not a good look for Kim at all because again, she's a public figure. She should be setting the example here. Oh my gosh, guys, there are some rude celebrities out there. So rude you wouldn't even believe it. It's shocking. Here's who they are. Ah! Ah! Jennifer Lopez has had such a bad rep of being rude, angry, controlling, narcissistic, and a bullying diva. If that sounds crazy, it's because we are. She's all over TikTok with people who have worked with her, fans and critics exposing her for her bad behavior. One, being her backup singer. Julia Wang said, if you were pretty or if you were Latina, like game over, she disliked you. She just acted like a bully. Can you imagine spending time with someone working in a closed setting every single day for months and this person doesn't even acknowledge you? Emily Watford said her niceness was so fake it was disgusting. She said she yelled at everyone, didn't like when people looked at her in her eye, and had unrealistic demands. There's also a video of her spitting her gum into her assistant's hand circling the internet. Ellen DeGeneres has a long history of being rude to people, and the stories led to her cancellation when some of the Ellen DeGeneres show's guests broke their silence regarding the treatment they had endured. In light of those commentaries, comedian Kevin T. Porter created a thread and told his followers he would donate to the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank for every antidote about the entertainer. The social media post reached 2,000 responses. One of the tweets read, when I was 15, the Ellen Show was doing a contest to fans, making a bust of her and sending it to her. I worked so hard on this and even wrote her a letter. 
Weeks later, she used it as a prop in a game and gave it away to a random person with a $500 attached to the bottom. My brother is a wish kid. His wish was to be at the 12 Days of Ellen, which was arranged one month before they canceled because Ellen refuses to interact with disabled people. It crushed his heart. This is what a second person shared. I get mad, I, I get anxious, I get frustrated, I get impatient. Working for her, I was instructed that I can't look at her in the eye and never ever say hi to her first. But don't worry, she definitely won't be saying hi to you in the first place. She creates the most toxic environment for her staff, a third exposed. Madonna has been called out for her rude behavior. Her most recent issue happened at the Kia Forum in California, during which she called out a concert goer for remaining seated throughout her performance only to find out that the fan was in a wheelchair. A thread on Quora re-emerged after the incident asking users, why is Madonna rude to her fans? I've heard too many stories regarding her rudeness. She's been known to push people out of the way when she passes them by. And she asked Peter Andre, a supporting act during her Australian tour, am I supposed to know you? This is when he bumped into her a few years later. Her rude behavior also caused a theater to ban her, according to Hollywood Reporter. On top of these accounts, Cher once called her a spoiled brat. These next celebrities, they're gonna blow your mind. Mike Myers earned the diva title because of his attitude. His Cat in the Hat co-star Amy Hill said that their time on the set of the flick was horrible and a nightmare because of his demands. I don't think Mike got to know anybody. He'd just be with his people and walk away. People would come and he'd just stand there. There was a guy who held his chocolates in a little Tupperware container and whenever he needed chocolate, he'd come running over and give him a chocolate. That's what divas are like, I guess, or people who need therapy, she disclosed. Even his staff members and former production workers experienced Myers' unfriendly treatment. Mike Myers had me fired off the set of The Love Guru because I made eye contact with him and I was there as his bodyguard, one person wrote. Chrissy Teigen has been known for lashing out at people publicly. One of her most infamous diva moments involved Courtney Stodden, who broke her silence in March 2021 as she accused Chrissy of bullying and harassing her. Courtney dropped several tweets Chrissy sent her over a decade ago while explaining that the words really affected her. I hate you. In my Friday fantasy, you dirt nap. Mm, baby. Those were some of the tweets. It's so damaging when you have someone like Chrissy Teigen bullying children, said Courtney. Chrissy published several apology messages afterwards, but more social media users came forward to brand her as a rude celebrity. Sean P. Diddy Combs has been arrested and indicted on federal charges. P. Diddy was finally arrested and charged. Wow. He was hit with several charges for various things. For years, Diddy has been getting away with things and a lot of people are finding it satisfying that he is finally going away for the many awful things he did. How did Diddy get away with everything he's been doing for so long? Blair Channing Ray, who is an influencer from Arlington, had the perfect words for this as well. She said, I don't want to hear nothing about how they coming for another black man for doing nothing because what P. Diddy did to Cassie was indeed something. Surveillance footage from 2016 showing what appears to be Diddy violently assaulting then-girlfriend Cassie. And everyone sharing these stories about P. Diddy is not lying either. Blair was so on point with this comment because at the end of the day, people are always gonna make excuses for their favorite stars. When it's this big of an injustice, we can't make excuses. Following the case, we were also updated that 1,000 bottles of baby oil were seized from his home. A thousand? Absolutely wild. You know, it was it was a big problem. I love the opinions of Cerise Fairfax, who is an intuitive soul coach, writer, and YouTuber. She always has amazing takes on celebrity news. So I asked her what her opinion was on the Diddy drama, and she said yes. Diddy was finally arrested yesterday, but he was supposed to be arrested today, and they pushed the arrest day up. They were working with lawyers to get him taken in. They are definitely gonna bring up everything they can from the past to the future. This is the reason people have to always pay attention to what they're doing, because in the end, things come back to bite them, and he's gonna get bitten like a swarm of wasps. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. He's gonna get stung and stung and stung, and the people he considers closest to him will be the people that will speak up against him first. Diddy has recently been accused of crimes during the height of his fame as a producer to huge names in hip hop, like Mary Kay Blige, Usher, Lil' Kim, and the late Biggie Smalls in the 1990s and 2000s. He was first accused of a years-long pattern crimes and mistreatment against his former girlfriend R&B singer Cassie Ventura in a lawsuit she filed against him. I think everybody's entitled to, you know, having that moment, I guess. Though the pair quickly settled, Cassie's suit opened the floodgates, as since then, more than half a dozen alleged victims have come forward with their own lawsuits against him. 
what I do when I like to celebrate. I like to turn up a little bit, but sometimes it just like, it get a little... I, I met all of them in the same year, so I've known huh? all of them the same amount of time. And on March 25th, 2024, his Beverly Hills and Miami mansions were simultaneously raided by Homeland Security. Several law enforcement agencies are raiding the home of hip-hop mogul P. Diddy. Diddy denied everything in Cassie's lawsuit, but when a horrible video came out showing some serious mistreatment of Cassie, he couldn't talk his way out of it. He posted a video apologizing for it on social media the next day. I'm so sorry, but I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. The first time he owned up to allegations against him, any of them. In the same month, Diddy's accusers were notified by federal investigators that they could be brought to court to testify before a grand jury. Before any of this came out, he denied all of the mistreatment against Cassie, so it was pretty surprising to many people when the video came out, and it was way worse than expected. Shocking and sickening video showing Sean Diddy Combs attacking a woman. Diddy has strongly denied all of the allegations and claimed that the accusers are only looking for a quick payday. The only lawsuit he settled with was Cassie. If she didn't have proof, he would definitely keep denying everything. It makes you wonder what other stars have been affected by his actions. There are a few stars that have spoken out about their disdain for Diddy as well. Let's look at some celebrities who absolutely cannot stand him. Aubrey O'Day. When Diddy was working with Danity Kane, of which Aubrey was a member, he first got to know Aubrey O'Day. He sacked her and Dee Woods, another member of the girl band, three years after the group was created. Although Aubrey has later stated that she refused to do things that were expected to her of her outside of recording and doing interviews to promote the band and album, Sean Combs claimed on television that Aubrey's attitude needed to be humble. In light of all the current accusations made against Diddy, this statement appears to be much more significant. Diddy recently reportedly sent NDAs to members of the Danity Kane, according to Aubrey, to ensure that exchange for the rights to their music, Bad Boy and Sean Combs will not be affected. This is just a way to get you to never be able to publicly speak about what we have experienced. 50 Cent. 50 Cent and Diddy have had a notably contentious relationship that spans nearly the entire length of 50 Cent's career in the entertainment industry. Known for his public feuds with various figures in music, 50 Cent has repeatedly taken aim at Diddy over the years. Their feud seems to go beyond just a single incident, with 50 Cent criticizing everything from Diddy's fashion choices to his mannerisms, the way he honors the legacy of the notorious B.I.G. Much of 50 Cent's disdain for Diddy has been expressed through social media and interviews. He has not held back in voicing his displeasure. Whether it's comments on how Diddy conducts himself or disapproval of his collaboration with other artists, 50 Cent has made it clear that he is not a Diddy fan. Their verbal sparring has become something of a recurring theme in hip hop, with 50 Cent frequently using his platform to mock or criticize Diddy. He told me to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the f what the what'd you just say? <laughs> While their back and forth has often seemed personal, neither has escalated the conflict beyond words. Still, the tension between them is palpable, with 50 Cent's dislike for Diddy being no secret to the public. Drake. Drake and Diddy have added a tumultuous relationship marked by a high profile altercation that stemmed from a disagreement over the song Zero to 100. Being Steph Curry with the shot, being cooking with the sauce, Chef Curry with the pot, boy. Drake, who's been compared to hip hop legends like Diddy and Jay Z due to his immense success in the industry, found himself in a heated dispute with Diddy over the rights to the track. The disagreement reportedly escalated into an altercation between the two at a Miami nightclub in 2014. While Drake and several witnesses, including radio host Charlemagne the God, claimed that the altercation did indeed happen, Diddy has consistently denied any confrontation. Despite the conflicting accounts, the incident caused a rift between the two artists, drawing significant media attention and fueling rumors of deep disdain. Danity Kane. When Danity Kane was recruited to Bad Boy in 2004, they appear to have what it took to become the next big girl group. But when Aubrey O'Day and Dee Woods were let go in 2008, the group chemistry shifted. When Diddy signed them, the original five had a certain sound that they were never able to replicate. At the absolute least, the group can concur that they have over the years heard comments from Diddy and people close to him. Diddy separated himself from the group as a result and they finally broke up in 2009. 2014 saw a temporary reunion, however things didn't work out and the group disbanded once more. After collaborating on new music under the Danity Kane moniker in 2020, Aubrey, Shannon Bax, and Don Richard have not released any more music. As a result, it is unknown what the group's status is.
Jay-Z, Diddy and Jay-Z have been close ever since their early 1990s rise to fame. Though they've been pals for a long time, it seems things soured when Diddy's close friends, Jay-Z, and Kanye West disappeared. The conflict between Jay and Kanye had a detrimental impact on Jay's relationship with Diddy. The two lost contact for three years as a result. Nonetheless, in 2019, the two were seen catching up at Diddy's 50th birthday. Thus, the two could become friends once more. Eminem, the tension between Eminem and Diddy has its roots in particular moment. Eminem sparked a feud when he made an inflammatory claim insinuating that Diddy had arranged the passing of rap icon Tupac Shakur. The day Diddy admits that he put the hit out, they got popped. This accusation, even though Eminem later clarified it was meant as a joke, struck a very serious chord. Taking a look at his past, I wonder if there are any hints that he would grow to do all of the things he's being charged for now. Sean Combs was born in 1964 in Harlem, New York. He attended Howard University but dropped out to pursue his music career. It's ridiculous how you put your lips on this. Don't kiss right there, girlfriend, I'm ticklish. <laughs> he founded his record label, Bad Boy Records, and it went on to be very successful. One of the most successful labels of its time. Well, it definitely lived up to its name. Diddy is a bad boy indeed. Throughout his career, he's had accusations, rumors, and many other things that slipped through the cracks before all of the information started coming out against him. He's won numerous awards. He has won three Grammy Awards and is known for his hit songs such as I'll Be Missing You. Kinda hard with you not around me. He's also ventured into various business ventures, including his own clothing line, fragrance line, and even a restaurant chain. He has a net worth of over 800 million, which makes him one of the wealthiest figures in the entertainment industry. He has also been involved in a lot of film productions as an actor. He showcased his acting skills in films like Monsters Ball and Get Him to the Greek. He fathered seven different children to four different women. In his record label Bad Boy Entertainment, he's managed artists like Khalees, MGK, Biggie Smalls, Carl Thomas, Faith Evans, and for people who love hip hop, do you remember the Eminem and MGK beef? MGK put out a diss track towards Eminem called Rap Devil. Rap God, I'm the Rap Devil, come a bare face with a black shovel like. And in response, Eminem made one back, but in the end of it, spoke about Diddy putting out a hit on Tupac. Hey, Diddy admits that he put the hit out that got punk. After this, MGK completely left hip hop and started making punk rock. Many people said that it's because Eminem blacklisted him. But with all the Diddy drama happening, rumors are going crazy and many people think that Diddy forced MGK out of hip hop because Eminem knew something that he didn't want getting out. Oh, and I'm just playing Diddy. You know I love you. A fan on Reddit commented with an interesting take, saying M for sure has insider information and he wouldn't just say that unless he was sure. I've long suspected that the bar is why MGK never responded. Did he shut MGK down because he didn't want M to keep running his mouth? M was probably fairly confident that line would have Diddy shut down MGK from responding, which is why M was so confident that there wouldn't be a response crazy stuff. Diddy also had a few of his own reality TV shows including Making the Band and I Wanna Work for Diddy. A PA who apparently worked for Diddy on Making the Band had some words to say about this. They wrote, so I worked as a PA on Making His Band, which were a bunch of musicians competing to go on tour with Diddy. I will say Diddy was one of the worst humans I ever worked on set with, like seven hours late and always throws a fit acts like a child, yells at everyone, acts like he's the best, and we can all agree he had Tupac ended. How did he get away with all this stuff for so long? A lot of people are being very satisfied that he's being taken down. Over the years, he collaborated with talent such as Usher, Christina Aguilera, and Rihanna, just to name a few. Also, the P. Diddy parties. The P. Diddy parties have been the talk of the town for years. 50 Cent has said the parties made him uncomfortable. Some claims of these parties include children. Others say things went on in the parties that P. Diddy didn't want people knowing about, so he got video footage of people doing things to make sure they kept quiet about what they saw. If you look more into the Diddy parties, there are so many rumors, it could be a video all on its own. 50 Cent is making a documentary on Diddy, so I'm sure we can look forward to real testimonies from real people who are involved with him, who knew him, and who had interactions with him that will be coming out. Plenty of artists found great success through Bad Boy Records, but quite a few regret signing onto Diddy's label. When he found himself facing time, rapper Black Rob claimed Diddy and Bad Boy left him in the dust. In an example of savageness, former Bad Boy signees 112 claimed Diddy left them stranded in a blizzard. 
Rap Trio, The Locks, skyrocketed to fame on Bad Boy, but when the group wanted out, he said no. Y'all ain't gotta get on the radio and, 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 and do certain tactics. The group went on a press campaign called Free The Locks, printing t-shirts for fans and publicly pleading with their label boss on the radio. Another one of Diddy's signees, rapper Mace, actually confronted Diddy on air with a set of release papers, which Diddy surprisingly signed. For all the public successes Bad Boy has seen, it's also seen its fair share of public drama. Sean Combs changed his stage name as frequently as we changed socks. Known as Puffy as a kid, he went by Puff Daddy as a label head and artist in the 1990s. By 2005, he re-emerged as P. Diddy, eventually shortening it to just Diddy. But he still goes by P. Diddy in the UK because a British artist already used Diddy as a name. I'm Sean Diddy Combs. So let's look at all the brave women who have dated him in the past. In 2007, after splitting from Kim Porter for the last time, Diddy started dating singer Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura. After an almost 10 year period of intermittent relationships, they finally called it quits in 2010. Cassie accused Diddy of essaying and mistreating her during their relationship in November 2023. Cassie first met Diddy when she was 19 and he was 37. And according to the lawsuit, which People was able to obtain, at the time, Diddy had just signed her to his record label, Bad Boy Records. What she said next was heartbreaking. She claimed that soon he had complete control over her life and that she consented to his advances because she was afraid what would happen if she turned him down. All aspects of Miss Ventura's life were controlled by either Mr. Combs or his management companies, the complaint said. Additionally, it was claimed that the complaint that Diddy had mistreated her once hopping on her face and making her spend a week hiding in a hotel room while her bruises healed. In a statement to People, Diddy's lawyer Braffman said, Mr. Combs denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. Miss Ventura's demand of 30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. The press release said, despite withdrawing her initial threat, Miss Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. But Diddy and Cassie reached a settlement the day after she filed the complaint, and they disclosed that no more information regarding the specifics of their arrangement will be made public. We've decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love Diddy. This was said in a statement. Braffman clarified Diddy's stance in the issue in a statement to People saying, just so we're clear, a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He's happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Miss Ventura the best. After their split, Cassie wed personal trainer Alex Fine in 2019, and the two of them had two kids. The next woman who dated Diddy might shock you. Diddy and Lori Harvey were spotted strolling around the Soho neighborhood of New York City in July 2019, sparking rumors that the two were dating. They were spotted on vacation in Italy with Harvey's parents, Majorie and Steve Harvey, a month later. But a few months later in October, Lori Harvey unfollowed Diddy on social media days after he was seen going out to dinner with another woman, giving the impression that the two had broken up. Lori Harvey denied reports in January 2023 that she dated Justin, Diddy's son, as well as Diddy. When asked by news host Adrian Balion what's the biggest misconception about her was, Lori Harvey replied, I've heard that I dated a father and a son before. Absolutely not true. Diddy and rapper Young Miami of City Girls were first connected in 2021, but they didn't officially announce their connection until June 2022 when Diddy showed up on her podcast. He said, we date, in response to Young Miami's question, so what are we? We're dating. We go have dates, we're friends, we go to exotic locations, we have great times, Diddy stated. Young Miami emphasized that she was single, but that they were dating an interview with XXL Meg a few months later. In September 2022, she said, we are dating, we single, but we're dating. People don't know what dating means. He's single, I'm single, but we're dating, she said. Later, when the two went to the 2023 Met Gala together, Diddy told a host that their relationship don't put titles on it. Young Miami declared to the cut that Diddy was not her man and that she was single earlier. Dana Tran is a model industrial specialist and cybersecurity specialist. And although Diddy has never officially acknowledged a connection with her, the two did welcome a baby, Love, together in October 2022. I'm so blessed to welcome my baby girl Love, Sean Combs, to the world he posted to X. Mama Combs, Quincy, Justin, Christian, Chance, Delilah, Jesse, and myself all love you so much. God is the greatest.